I see it's probably about to pass speed. It's probably in the bottom scene with a lot of pressure at the time. Okay, this is the RC Explorer bicopter. And we're gonna build one right now. All right, let's start with the tilt mechanism. This needs to be able to rotate freely with very little friction. To achieve that, we might need to remove some material because the tolerances are really tight. If you insert this screw, you can feel how tight it is and kind of how much material you need to take away. I use the Maker Knife, which is the best knife in the world, mainly because I helped design it. It's available on MakerKnife.com. Yeah, or you can use sandpaper. Up to you. Make sure that you test the fit often. We don't want it to be too floppity flippy. Also, insert the screw and move it back and forth. This is to reduce friction from the tight grip that the holes might have. Or if you have one, you can use a file. Now that everything is moving freely, do the same to the other tilt mechanism as well. Because, uh, you know, you want to take out the tools again and all that, you know. Okay, onwards. Mount these nylon standoffs into the holes that are located in the corners of this little plate. And screw it down using these nylon nuts. This is going to be used to uh, attach the flight controller to later. But first we're going to use this plate to help hold down the carbon fiber arm. Shove these four steel screws into the battery plate and then mount the arm on top of that and then smack on the plate. Put on the lock nuts. But don't tighten them too hard because we need to be able to adjust the arm because we want it to be perfectly in the center. Use a ruler or a caliper or something to measure each side and get them to uh, be perfectly the same. When you're done, you can tighten down the nuts, but don't go crazy on just one screw and then move over. Tighten them a little bit at a time and move around in a circle pattern. Uh, otherwise, you might end up with the plate crooked and uh, kind of bad. Mount the power distribution board next and use nylon screws and nylon nuts to tighten it down. Make sure that the battery pads are pointing forward. Since the bicopter is using two high power servos, you need a BEC that can deliver this current. Built-in BECs in flight controls are usually not powerful enough. On the baby PDB, you can select the output voltage. And we're gonna set that to six volts to get the best performance. Just use a soldering iron and make a little blob between the middle pin and the six volt. While we're here soldering, we might as well add the uh, battery connector. You'll need a pretty powerful soldering iron to be able to solder these properly. And when I say powerful, I don't mean high temperature. I mean it has a lot of watts to put in the heat to keep the same temperature throughout the whole soldering process. It only takes a couple of seconds to check if there's a short after you soldered. It's really good practice and it's going to save you so much headache and potentially even gear. Now grab some leftover cable, pre-tin the wires, always pre-tin wires, and also pre-tin the pads. We're going to solder these on here and I'm going to show you exactly how everything is connected with the schematic later. I highly recommend not using lead free solder. It's so much more difficult to work with and the solder joints are more difficult to see if you did proper. Again, it's a really good idea to check if there's a short circuit between things. All good. Let's move on to the ESCs. We're going to desolder these cables and add longer ones. I'm using 270 millimeter long ones that are included in the Bicopter Electronics Kit, but they're also available separately on the RC Explorer store. Since this is taking a while, here's some tips on soldering. Wipe off the tip on the sponge as often as you can, and apply new solder to the tip or the solder joints just before you're soldering. This is because there's flux present in the solder itself, which makes all the difference because the flux helps it flow properly, protects it and makes a much nicer joint. So that's the reason why you get those spikes. That's if the flux runs out. So yeah, keep it clean, new solder all the time. Next tip is to never move the thing you're soldering down. Like a wire is very easy to accidentally move. This will create a cold solder joint. It might look semi okay, but it's not terribly good because it can pull out or have really poor conductivity. Okay, back to the build. I soldered up the motor to the ESC and the order of the wires doesn't matter at this point. Don't forget to put the heat shrink on because uh, that's going to be annoying otherwise. Slide on one of the side plates and then take out the tilt mechanism, mount it to the arm using zip ties and then screw in the motor into the mount. It's a good idea to mount the zip ties in opposite direction. This way there's pull force in each direction instead of just one. So um, it's much easier for it to flip on the side if the knot is only on one side. Don't forget to use Loctite. Anytime you screw metal into metal, it's a really good idea to use it, especially in this application when we have vibrations. So please don't forget it, otherwise the world is gonna end. Mount the motor so the wires pointing back and away from the body. This is because we need freedom of movement for the tilt going back and forth so it doesn't strain the wires or make unnecessary friction. Now thread the cables through the little hole that's in front of the boom on the body. Be careful so you don't damage any of the wires because uh, that would suck. Carbon fiber is conductive and things could blow up. 
Now grab the servo and cut off the leads, because we are not going to use those. Then mount the servo onto the boom using this little distance thingy and uh, feed the wire through. The same hole as the other ones. Shove the servo into the splines on the tilt mechanism and then uh, screw it in a little bit. We're going to change this later to get the perfect angle, but for now just to keep it in there. And then mount the servo using zip ties and you will need to do two zip ties and tie them together. Make sure again that you have the knots in opposite directions. Tighten them a little bit at a time because you want the knots on the top to lay flat against the servo and also the knots on the bottom to lay against the carbon fiber boom flat. Time to whip out that soldering iron again and uh, let's solder up some power wires. Make sure that you have some slack in there because uh, it's going to make life a lot easier if you can actually move stuff around without stuff getting caught everywhere and not being able to move. As you can see, I'm blatantly ignoring the pads here. I'm just soldering the wire straight to where it doesn't really matter. They're all connected to the same spot anyway. Another tip is to use a pair of tweezers because they give you good control over the wire and you don't have to burn your fingers. Needle nose pliers usually work as well, but they're usually a bit more clumsy. Now repeat everything on the other side. While I'm building this, I can give you some life advice. Buy a really good pair of side cutters. It's totally worth it. As long as you take somewhat care of it, it lasts forever. This kind that I have here, they're 12 years old and they still cut super nice and there's no gap in them. It was a really good investment. It's almost time to mount the flight controller and I highly recommend mounting it with the USB port pointing forward. Otherwise it's going to be very difficult to get to it later. Now connect everything to your flight controller. Here's a schematic for the F3 FC and baby PDB. Please note that not all flight controllers will work with the bicopter, especially the feedback wires. So make sure that you do research on the flight controller that you're going to use, see on the forums if someone else has used it, and go from there. Again, make sure that you test everything for short circuits because you're done soldering. Okay, we're good. Now mount the flight controller with these nylon screws. Now we're going to move over to the computer and do some basic setup. I'm not going to go through the whole Betaflight setup process in this video. There's plenty of other good ones out there, like Joshua Bardwell. I'll add some links in the description. Flash the latest version of Betaflight and then go to the configuration tab, select Bicopter as the platform. This is super important. Set the board alignment to the number of degrees you turn the flight controller when you mounted it with the USB facing forward. If you manage to get this right, the 3D model will move the exact same way as your copter. Double check it. I recommend flying the bicopter in either angle mode or horizon mode when you start out. So set those modes up. If you're using the exact same setup as this video with the F3 FC and baby PDB, you can simply copy the CLI text located in the starting PIDs tab on the bicopter product page. Paste those into the CLI tab and it will change all the settings for you. After pasting this, you should always double check all the settings so it works with your copter. Go to the motors tab and see if output 3 and 4 is moving when you're moving the board. Those are the servo outputs, so we know those work then. If you're doing the setup manually or on a different board, you will need to change the resource mapping for the pins for the servo and the ESCs. And if you're using the RC Explorer feedback servos, you need to change the PVM rate to 250. Alright, good job. Now let's plug it in and see if it works. It does pretty nicely, eh? So uh, we're gonna test the motor direction here. At the time of shooting this video, I have the props turning this way. That might change in the future, so keep an eye up. One of the motors is spinning the wrong way, so I'm gonna change the direction by desoldering two wires and switching them. Doesn't matter which two, just switch two of them. You can also very easily change the motor direction by changing it in the BL32 app, but that only runs on Windows at the time of this video, so it's easier to just solder. Remember to check that the motor is now spinning the correct way before shrinking the heat shrink. Which is the next step. Shrink the tubing on the other side as well, because both spin in the right direction now. Now we're finally going to start assembling the frame. Take this piece. It's the bottom wing and it's going to go through the side plate through this little slot here. And then, here comes the tricky bit, you're going to thread this into this larger slot on the bottom plate here and you need to get it in at an angle and it's kind of a pain and you're gonna swear a lot and you're not gonna like me anymore but it's fine it's gonna pass as soon as you get it in there it's super solid now get the bottom plate or battery plate into these slots now we're gonna place the battery straps and it's much easier to do at this stage than later because uh, they're kind of in there and uh, it's a pain to thread them in and out uh, it's not the best solution but it it worked, it was very difficult to work around. The front strap is going to go over these wires, so make sure that the wiring is nice and tidy. 
Now we're gonna mount the other bottom wing. It goes in the exact same way and it's just as painful as the first time. Once you're done swearing, we can now mount the 40 millimeter standoffs that keeps the frame together. So let's mount the bottom one first here because that's not gonna influence the top pieces that much. You can tighten down the screws on both sides on this one. The next one we're gonna mount is in the front and this one you should only tighten down one side. The other one should have the screw in it but don't tighten it all the way. This is so we can bend apart the frame a little bit to get the plates on the top in. All the plates on the top are only press fitted. So you slot it in on one side and then you push the frame together and it's gonna be held in place. The easiest way to get them in is to start at the back and move forward. I recommend skipping the two middle plates at this stage because you still need to access the USB port to do all the final settings and tuning. Tighten down the screws all the way now that you have the grill in place. Now we're gonna assemble the top wings. It might require quite some force to push them together, but this is so they're really solidly together and don't flex later. The holes here in the top is made for a standoff to pass through. This assembly is now slid into the back of the copter. You have to make sure that the standoff lines up with this hole here, and then you can tighten down the screws and it's gonna be in there nice and tight. We're very close to doing the maiden flight on this. All we have to do is set up the servos. So we need to jump over to the computer. Remember that I showed you how to set up level mode before? Well, take it away because we want it in acro mode at the moment. In order to make the servo set up, you need to enable expert mode. It's in the top right corner there. Then you can click on servos, click enable live mode and type in 1520 into servos two and three. Then we're gonna plug in the battery. Both servos should now be live and they're gonna sit idle at their midpoint. There's a very high probability that the tilt mechanism is not pointing straight up at this point. So you wanna slide it out and then readjust it on the cogs, push it in and then screw it all the way in and then unscrew it a couple of turns. You don't want extra friction here. You might not be able to get the tilt to point straight up. That's okay, just get it as close as you can. Slide on the servo setup tool. This is what we're gonna use to be able to determine if it's pointing straight up and down and then the angles. As you can see here, it's kind of off. So let's adjust some stuff. The midpoint is what determines where the servo is when it's idle. So either increase that number or decrease it depending on the angle. We want it to lay flat on both sides so it's perfectly lined up. Now flip the tool over because now we're gonna measure the 40 degrees throw in each direction. Let's start with one side. Move and hold the yaw stick all the way to one side on your transmitter. This will give it full deflection on the servo. Now we wanna adjust the min point or max point depending on where the servo is pointing. Hit enter every time you typed in a new number. That way it updates quickly. You want the top piece of the tilt to just touch the top of this and lay flat. Once you're happy with the end points in either direction and on both servos, do not forget to click save. It is a pain otherwise. Congratulations, you just finished the servo setup. Time for some cleanup. Mount the ESCs using zip ties. Double check all moving parts. You don't want anything rubbing, have too much friction, or generally be in the way of destroying things. So uh, move it around a little bit and uh, make sure everything is good. Mmm, look at that body. Does that look nice? Okay, we need to mount a battery in it because we have to do the super important step of checking the CG. Usually a 4S 1300 milliamp battery is right above this standoff in the back here. At least it's a good place to start. The motors have to be pointing straight up when doing the CG tip test, otherwise everything is gonna be wrong. You want it to balance perfectly in the middle of the boom, like dead on, because the copter is controlling itself by moving mass around. Like, it's crazy cool, right? Uh, I kind of forgot to record a step in this video and that's to calibrate the accelerometers so the copter knows what's level. You can do this by putting down two soda cans and rest the flat part of the carbon fiber boom on it. So it's nice and level. That's how it's gonna hover later. So you just click calibrate accelerometer and that's it. Now you can fly. Thank you very much for following along in this build. I would love it for you to join the community on rcexplorer.se slash forums and try to figure out how we can make this fly even better. Because it's a very weird beast and there's not a lot of research or flight testing on it. So I made this to look as cool as possible so many people would get it and make it as good as they can. So join rcexplorer.se slash forums, help out.
buy this thing. Thank you. Ciao.